Welcome to Truth in History. God's true people, Israel. Revelation of God's plan. Fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Mystery of God shall be finished. Kingdoms become kingdoms of Christ. Truth in History with Charles A. Jennings. Thank you for joining me once again on Truth in History. In this series, I am talking about a great nation that once existed, but is now in major decline. Now, we can talk about ancient Israel because it was a nation chosen of God, blessed of God, prophets. They had wonderful prophets with wonderful promises. They were chosen by the Lord. That's our ancestors. They were chosen by God, blessed by God, but they were a rebellious people just like we are today. And on the last program, I read a prophecy concerning Israel and America and Great Britain, found in Genesis chapter 48, the two sons of Joseph becoming great and Ephraim becoming greater. But Amongst all the blessings of God, they became so wicked and so vile that God had to destroy the nation in order to save the people. And in the book of Amos, it tells us concerning northern Israel, the prophet prophesied, I will destroy this wicked kingdom, but I will preserve the family of Jacob. That's our hope. Now, when we come to the book of Hosea, Hosea was a prophet to the northern house of Israel, and he said these words, he said, Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. What is the prophet saying? What is the prophet saying to us? That there comes a time in the history of a nation that once knew God, that once reverenced His Word, and extolled the principles of the book in its governing power. A nation that was once blessed by revival, just like ancient Israel, just like America, Great Britain also. Can you imagine how many wonderful miracles and revivals took place in ancient Israel, but yet they still were joined to idols. And there came a time when God said, Ephraim is joined to his idols. Let him alone. Let him go. He's past the point of no return. America, my friends, as a nation, as a body politic, is past the point of no return. It's past the point of no return. That is the body politic. But there's hope in God's promises He's going to save His people. He's going to save and preserve His people. And as I said before, wicked governments never repent they are destroyed. 
God is going to destroy our wicked government. And there's a means that God used in the Old Testament, and He's using those same means today. Let's turn to the book of Daniel. In Daniel chapter 5, it says, I want to, I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but I want to read several verses. Beginning with verse 1, Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, whilst he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines might drink therein. They were desecrating the holy vessels that were taken out of the temple in Jerusalem. This king... Belshazzar, king of Babylon, he was desecrating holy things. What do you think our president is doing and our vice president, our Congress, and our so-called Supreme Court is doing today? They are desecrating holy things. Well, what are those holy things? The Bible, the gospel, righteousness, holiness, purity, and our very bodies, because our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. That's what Paul said. So they're, they're not only drinking out of physical vessels as Belshazzar, but now they have gone to desecrate the very bodies by giving license to sin giving license, passing a mandate, a government mandate for same-sex marriage. It's an abomination, my friends. We're going to pay for it. Our nation is going to pay dearly for these nine men or five men and women on the bench that pass such an abominable mandate. They can't make a law, but they pass these mandates and make people think it's a law. Verse number 3, Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines drank in them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and silver brass, iron, wood, and stone. But the next verse, in the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Uh-oh, divine edict is coming to Babylon and to Belshazzar. A thousand lords were celebrating with him that night. Boy, he thought he had the tiger by the tail on a downhill drag. Everything was going just great. He was the king of the world. Babylon was the most powerful empire of the time. And they, could, they thought they could do anything they wanted to do, even desecrate the holy vessels out of the temple of God. And then all of a sudden, on the plaster of the wall appears the fingers of a man's hand and begins to write. You know the story. The king was so frightened that his knees smote together. 
He called the wise men, the astrologers, the soothsayers, what's going on. His astrologers could not decipher the handwriting on the wall. They were so wise, but yet they could not see a divine sign from God. It's just like our politicians today. They graduate from the Ivy League colleges. They have their degrees. They have their big paychecks. They have their positions in government, but they're dumb as a rock when it comes to understanding the law of God. They are as dumb as a rock or dumber when it comes to understanding how God deals with the nation. They think they have the answers, though. They try. Well, Belshazzar's wife says, um, Hey, Belshazzar, I have, a, I have some advice for you. There's a man in this kingdom by the name of Daniel. The name of Daniel. He's a wise man and the spirit of the gods according to King James language, the spirit of the gods is in him. Why don't you call him? Well, the king says, whoever, a soothsayer or Daniel, if you can decipher the handwriting on the wall, we will elevate you to, the, to be the third ruler in the kingdom. We'll put a royal robe on you, and we'll put a chain of gold about your neck. Daniel says, you can keep all of that. You can keep all your accolades. You can keep all your recognitions. But I can tell you what it means. And then he gives Belshazzar a little history lesson. In Daniel chapter 5 and verse number 18, he says, O thou king, the most high God, gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom, and majesty, glory, and honor. And for all the majesty that he gave him, all people, nation, language, trembled and feared before him. Whom he would he slew, and whom he would he kept alive, and whom he would he set up, and whom he would he put down. But when his heart was lifted up, his mind hardened in pride, that's a description of our leadership and our people in general today. God gave us this kingdom. God gave us this nation. But now we're lifted up in pride. He was deposed from his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him. And he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beast, and his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men, and that he appointeth over it whomsoever he will. In other words, God divinely deals with nations. Let's never forget it. That's what the whole book of Daniel teaches us of the the image of the dream of the man, the head and the breast and the, the uh, thighs and the legs represented the dynasty or the, the kingdoms, succession of kingdoms. And God dealt with each one of them. Don't you think He's dealing with America and Great Britain today? Don't you think that the God of heaven has the same moral laws and the same rule book to judge us today as he judged Belshazzar in the days of old. Verse 22, And thou his son, O Belshazzar, 
hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this, but hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven. They have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords, thy wives, concubines, have drunk wine in them, and thou hast praised the gods of silver, gold, brass, iron, wood, stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know, and the God in whose hand thy breath is, whose are all thy ways, hast thou not glorified. In other words, just totally ignore the God who gave us breath. That's what our people are doing today. Our people at large have a mentality of pleasure and treasure. They worship the gods of silver, gold, iron, wood, stone, just like ancient Babylon. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. Mini, mini, tico, you farson. And Daniel says, King, this is the interpretation of the thing. Many, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Many, many, tekel, you farson. Were the words written on the plaster of the wall of the palace? Folks, God someday is going to write, if He hasn't already started writing, those words over the American empire in which we live. If you just knew the corruption the moral debauchery in our nation, in every level. Many of you know. But you know, we used to sing a song years ago. I want to read you the words of this song, The Feast of Belshazzar. At the Feast of Belshazzar and a thousand of his lords, while they drank from golden vessels as the book of truth records. In the nighttime, while they reveled in the royal palace hall, they were filled with consternation. T'was a hand upon the wall. It was the hand of God upon the wall. It was the hand of God upon the wall. Will the record be found wanting, or will it be found trusting? while the hand is writing on the wall. See the brave prophet Daniel as he stands before the throne and rebukes the haughty monarch for his mighty deeds of wrong. As he read out the writing, "'Tis the doom of one and all, for thy kingdom now is finished," said the hand upon the wall. See the faith the zeal, the courage that would dare to do the right, that the Spirit gave to Daniel. It was the secret of his might. In his home in old Judea, or a captive in the hall, for he understood the writing of his God upon the wall. So our deeds are all recorded. There's a hand that's writing now, Sinners, give your heart to Jesus, to His royal mandate bow. For the day is fast approaching. It must come to one and all, while the sinner's condemnation shall be written on the wall. The Feast of Belshazzar. Our nation was once great. 
Daniel said that the Lord gave Nebuchadnezzar the kingdom. But it came a time when his heart was lifted up in pride. You see, our nation was once great. America was once great. I want to read you a quote from John Adams, our second president. Did you know that he also served as chairman of the American Bible Society? And in an address to military leaders, this is what he said. Quote, We have no government armed with the power capable of contending with human passions. Unbridled by morality and true religion. Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other." Unquote. Well, John Adams' son, John Quincy Adams, was the sixth President of the United States. He also was the chairman of the American Bible Society. Can you imagine a modern president of our country being the president or the chairman of a Bible Society? I mean, it's just not going to happen. They may be president of an anti-Bible Society. They might hypocritically lay their hand on the cover of the Bible and swear their oath to uphold the Constitution, but knowing they're lying through their teeth all the time. John Quincy Adams, the son of John Adams, sixth president, chairman of the American Bible Society. This is what he said, I quote, The highest glory of the American Revolution was this. It connected in one indissoluble bond the principles of civil government with the principles of Christianity." Unquote. Wow. Now they've come up with this fictitious argument, the separation of church and state. What they really mean is the separation of God and state. That's what they mean. Yes, who would want one particular church ruling the nation? I'm not advocating that one church rule the nation. But these days, this fictitious argument they say that came from George Washington, the separation of church and state. These globalists, secularists, these God-haters, ACLU and JDL and ADL and many other organizations, even some churches, so-called churches, advocating Get God out of public life. In 1782, the United States Congress voted this resolution, quote, The Congress of the United States recommends and approves the Holy Bible for use in all schools, unquote. I want to read that one again. The Congress of the United States recommends and approves the Holy Bible for use in all schools." Unquote. But earlier on in our nation, our Congress formed the American Bible Society. 
And after creating the Declaration of Independence, the Continental Congress voted to purchase and import 20,000 copies of the Scriptures, the Bible, for the people of this nation. You won't see that happening among our wicked leadership today. But this is what made America great. And that's why I have entitled this series, Once There Was a Great Nation. Well, I have more, but I see that my time is running out. If you have never received one of our free magazines, I want to encourage you to write. We'll send it to you free of charge, put you on the mailing list free of charge. We will not solicit funds from you. On the television, on the phone, in letter, or in the magazine, we do not solicit funds. But we will send you one of our magazines, whether it be a current issue or uh, one of our back issues, because sometimes we run out of our current issue. We also have six brochures that we'll be glad to send you. What does the Bible say about cremation or burial? Why don't you believe what the prophets have told you? The God and people of two covenants, same people, same God, Old Testament, New Testament. Who were the Galatians? The truth about the six-pointed star. And are the Jews really the Israel of the Bible? These are loved in some areas, with some people hated in others. But folks, I'm not trying to win any popularity contest. What's the point? I'm not trying to amass unto myself any uh, mansions or, or cars or toys or motorcycles or airplanes or all the rest of the material uh, passing gain that men get involved with and call it the blessings of God. I am interested in knowing and speaking the truth without fear or favor. I pray that you have been blessed, or challenged at least, in this lesson today, because we must answer to our King, the Lord Jesus Christ, individually and also as a nation. And let me tell you, my friend, the handwriting is on the wall. I think that the fingers are now appearing for America. Your kingdom is divided. It's on the brink of disaster. For any material offered on this program or to be a part of this ministry, please write or call today. We thank you and may God bless you for your response to this end time ministry. Truth in History, where the Word of God is not found.